The following broadcast is brought to you by the friends and partners of Revival Ministries International. I want to read one scripture to you this morning from the book of John, chapter 4. In verse 4, and I'm going to use for my sermon text here this morning, and he must needs go through Samaria. That's the scripture. When it comes to the flow of the Spirit, many people have no understanding what that is. They think the flow of the Spirit is a bunch of things that you wrote down and you follow that plan. But that's not how the Holy Spirit actually works. Not that you couldn't have a bunch of things that you write down and follow that plan. There's nothing wrong with that. Many people do that and are what you would call somewhat successful. But when you take what they're doing and you line it up with what heaven wants, it's two totally different things. What man considers a success, God thinks is a failure. Because at the end of the day, you've accomplished everything by your book, not his book. In other words, was it good to do? Yes. Did it work out fine? Yes. But was that what the Lord wanted? No. That's what you did because you filtered it through your brain and you came up with the impossibilities of the natural. Well, we can't do that. That's not in our budget. We're not able to do that. We're not going to be able to accomplish that. We looking at the economy right now and they report is coming on the news. This is not working out like we wanted to. Who cares? What you think? Let me ask a question. Do you think God for any moment of time has ever been concerned about what's going on in the news or worried about what they say about lack or shortage or any of that stuff? Do you think God's ever worried about it? Let me ask. So give me a show of hands. How many want to think that God's actually worried about it? Who thinks God's actually sitting around heaven going, I don't know what to do. And then when you come up to God with all the impossibilities, it's like the Lord said, you know, I was just waiting for you to grow, uh, come to your senses. And what were you thinking? Trying to branch out at this time and do something like that. Don't you understand the time and the season that you're living in? Yeah, I know what the time is, season I'm living in. It's a time of sowing and reaping. It's a time of doing the will of God. It's a time of the due season of me coming into what God has promised me to do, what he told me years ago that I would do. It's got nothing to do with the interest rates or the climate or anything going on as the hot air comes out of Washington, D.C. God's not even moved by any of that stuff. Think God is upset about some Facebook post? You think God actually, oh, he's on Facebook, he has 20 million people follow him, and there's thousands of people. You think God even, are you kidding me? Do you know how many of those are bots anyway? They're not even real people. Hello. There was a ministry running around. He, he says he's got 27 million followers on Facebook. My son pulled them up. They were all out of Pakistan, India, and parts of Asia that didn't even understand a word of English. But every time you heard him, I have 27 million followers on Facebook. And you want to say yes, and 26 million, 850,000 are all fake. It's all phony baloney. It's smoke and mirrors, my friend.
So while we tell you to plan and strategize and all that, you better get heaven's plan because God's about to blow your plans out of the waters. I'll tell you right now, there was nothing in a hundred years of strategizing that would put a pavilion of this magnitude up on the river parking lot and so quickly, like that, paid for cash. But it was God's plan. Can you say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. If this thing had been filtered down and we had a whole committee talking about, everybody would have said, you know, it's locked down. You're going to put a field up at the back of the property. Do you really need 400 foot? Do you need two acres of of, of astroturf? I don't know. I just felt the Lord say a field. I was mad because there was no grass. Thank God for AstroTurf. Come on, you can do better than that. I remember the very first day when I came here, I walked because we looked at three options in Polk County and I knew I was trying to take the pressure off of the Hillsborough County Police Department because we were going to open up. But then the Lord said, no, the only place you have is here. I came, I walked, I looked at Pastor Eric, put the platform over here. And then I walked along like this. I could just walk along. Okay, and we'll put the perimeters over here, put a perimeter over there. I want restrooms on the back. I want security fences. I walked and just began to speak out what I saw on the inside. Somebody said, did you draw it out? No, there was nothing drawn out. There was nothing on paper. It was just coming out. And what we started on Pentecost Sunday in 2020, here we are. It's a whole lot different now. That was in the belting sun. I don't even know how we made that first summer. It was so hot here. Even the black people were getting sunburned. I'm telling you right now. It was, it was so hot. It was so, that's why I prayed. And then the Lord said, get all the big umbrellas. How many know those big umbrellas that we put up here? And then, but then people started getting really casual. You think we were at Clearwater Beach. They were coming in short pants. They were sitting in flip-flops. They were sitting back there. People were bringing recliners. They were lying back, falling asleep. They were going to the to the food trucks, they were eating taco. I'm walking along, I can't see anybody. I've come prepared for a Sunday morning message. They sit like that at the beach. One guy was lying here in the front. I said, get up and sit on the front. He said, no. He left. I thought, what are you doing here? I, th- I guess he was catching a suntan. I said, why, why don't we have suntan lotion? People selling suntan. I, hey, would you like some of this? This is good, this is what, you, what are you looking for? We were burnt like crispy critters. We had sunburn upon sunburn. And I kept praying. I said, Lord, I know we've got to put a covering over this place because when it rains here, it's like a whole lake is lifted up and thrown on your head. How many been in one of these Florida rains? A lake, basically what happens, God picks a lake up and just throws it on your head. And that's rain. And then suddenly, in three and a half weeks, the structure went up. Which is miraculous. Really is. And we're not done yet. This is, we're not done anywhere near done. The problem comes when man tries to take what God wants to do and strain it through his mental capacity, which is limited. How many know? As brilliant as what people's minds are, their mental capacity is limited. So you have to ask the Lord today, is the plan I'm doing, is it my plan or is it your plan? 
Do you know, Israel wanted a king. God didn't want them to have a king. He wanted to be their king. All of their problems came from when they got their king. America, even in this hour, is looking for somebody else to come and lead. Oh, we're going to get Trump back. In a, who cares? Really, I mean, I'm not against 45, but I've got news for you. God don't care. America needs God. America doesn't need some president that's going to come and sort out all of the problems. America needs another great spiritual awakening. And what the transformation that will take place in America has nothing to do with political power. The transformation that will take place in America has to do with the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm hearing all of these people come. Each one's got the thing. We've got to do this. We've got to do that without the Holy Ghost. The plans of men will come to nothing, will come to naught. Whatever is the plan of heaven will stand. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm aligning myself with the plan of heaven. We'll do what heaven wants. We'll say what heaven once said. We'll go where heaven says to go. We'll do what heaven says to do. That's it. It's not even negotiable. Hallelujah. You know, right now we've got people calling us, will you come here? Will you come there? Can you travel here? I said, in the plan of heaven. I'll come to you, but <laughs> without that, somebody messaged me, said, when you come into our city, I said, uh, probably not. I have been there like seven times. You were never there when I was there. <laughs> and if you were, you never listened to a word I said, why would I come back? Oh, we need you back here. No, tune in. Right down by on YouTube. <laughs> tune in. Thousands of videos online. I don't have time to come sit there and look at your sad face. <laughs> Sitting in your religious structure. Some people, you get to the church, they're so sad. What's wrong with you? Well, when I came here, they, they made me get circumcised. Uh, how many times did they make you do that, bro? Seven times. Yeah, well, you could see there's nothing left. My God. No wonder you're so sad. They've been spiritually mutilated. No life, no joy, no peace. Listen to me. You listen carefully what I'm telling you right now. There are many in ministry today that are hiring outside agencies to come in to restructure, to rebrand them, to come and get them moving in the right direction. Oh, really? Outside agencies are going to come and correct what God has called you to do. They weren't even there when the Lord called you. That's like Moses at the burning bush where God suddenly appears to him. I am. And then Moses said, I don't know what to do. We need to hire some committees. Can you send back to Egypt and bring some people from Egypt? In? There's some wise people in Egypt. You know, they work for Pharaoh's house. I know they're still alive because we saved them. They, they put blood on the doorpost. Of London. Go, go get them. Surely some of their descendants are alive. They can come and help us and we can make the, the next phase to get into the promised land of what God's told us to do. Why do people always want to go around and find somebody, especially with no anointing? No anointing. Notice the look of horror on my face. 
No anointing whatsoever. Going to find out. Somebody said, well, they're an expert. Yeah, but they have no anointing. If you don't have an anointing, you won't be able to make it because you can't take the fire. Let me tell you, just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they were marching up and down in the midst of the fire, the fourth man was walking up and down with them. Why? Because they had the anointing. They had the hand of God that was with them. The experts that heat the fire seven times hot had no anointing whatsoever. To heat a fire seven times hotter, you were a fire specialist. The fire took out the fire specialist. You want to know the number one problem in America today? There's many people that have been touched by the Holy Ghost, but they run on a little tiny little pilot light. I was on... Instagram live and people were talking to me from South Africa. South Africa needs the fire. I said, no, it doesn't. There's many people in South Africa that have had the fire, but they turned down the flame to become a little pilot light. But you have to turn up the flame. You turn up the flame on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And let me tell you right now, that flame of the Holy Ghost, that flame of the Holy Ghost will sustain you even when you don't feel like it. Somebody said, you know, I've been a little off a few months now. I've just got disengaged or whatever. Yeah, you mean what you're saying is I just turned down the flame. I went back to my pilot light. We're not allowing anybody around the river to go to a pilot light. You're going to be at full flame. That's why coming up here in just one week is eight days, two meetings a day, when you're going to get saturated with the full flame of heaven and you're going to run on the full flame. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Gloria a Dios. And then everything that God does will come out of the flow. It'll just, you get up and you go. And as you go, there's a flow. And when you need it, there's the dough. It doesn't matter if your name's not Joe. You just get up every day. And you're in the flow of heaven. I must needs go through Samaria. That's what Jesus said. I mean, Lord, really, we're actually going over here. Yeah, but I must needs go through Samaria. Somebody said, where are you going? I don't know. Just follow. I must needs go through here. That's why it's very hard for a natural man to understand the mind of a spiritual person. It's hard to even discern them because you actually don't know what they're going to do. You actually think you know what they're going to do and you plan it. They're going to do this and then they do that. That's how Jesus was. Like you show up four days later for a funeral. What minister shows up four days later for a funeral? Jesus. That's why Jesus would never be called to be a local pastor of any church in America. So he said, look, we've got a guy, he turns water into wine, he raises the dead, but just let you know, he shows up late for a funeral. (laughs) Big no-no. I want our pastor on time. If Aunt Minnie dies, he need to be there the moment she goes. (laughs) Everything is about a flow. Even the workers around the ministry have to get into the flow. Everybody. 
Otherwise, you're wearing different armor. Don't come around this ministry and put on the arm of the flesh and try to run with what we're doing. You're going to get your armor, let me tell you, it's going to be dismantled. You're going to get fried like chicken. (laughs) Crispy. If you come around, get under the anointing of heaven, and the same anointing that's on us and on this ministry will carry you. It will be like you're behind one of those big semis and you get pulled in the slipstream. Can you say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of you don't even realize what's happening to you. You're being pulled in the slipstream of heaven. I said you are being pulled in the slipstream of heaven. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost right now. Somebody said, Pastor, the Lord doesn't even know. He knows you. There's men and women sitting here right now that in the next three years, as you follow the flow of the Holy Ghost, God's going to use you to do some of the things that your family member, friends, loved ones will look at you. They'll shake their head and say, I can't believe it. I've never thought that would ever take place. I never thought that would happen. Let me tell you why it's going to happen. Because you're in the flow of heaven. You're in the flow of the Holy Ghost. And it's getting stronger and it's getting stronger, and it's getting stronger. Can you say amen? And that day will never come unawares. You'll be a step ahead of the enemy everywhere you go. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let me say this, then we're going to pray. There's a pastor who was touched in our meetings back in Oakland, California, back 1996. He's from Thailand. He came to America and a brain surgeon, studied seven years in Thailand, came to America. They said to him, you're not qualified to be a brain surgeon. So he went back to school, studied another seven years. 14 years studied... Now he's the leading brain surgeon in the northwest of America. But he got touched by the fire of God. He then, over the years, went to Thailand and built 70 churches across the nation of Thailand and has a main church in Seattle. All because the fire of God hit a brain surgeon. And so I spoke to him about it. He said, Pastor Rodney, when I came to your meetings in 96, he said, the joy hit me, the power of God hit me. And he said, everything that's just happened is miraculous. But he said, let me tell you, that anointing does not leave me when I leave the pulpit. He said, there have been many days when I walk into the operating room and he says, they're prepping somebody for brain surgery. They put the x-ray up on the screen. And as I look at the x-ray, the Lord says to me, it's the wrong way around. Wow. Now, if he went with the operation the way it was, he would have operated on the wrong side of the person's brain. Wow. He never said one word. He just reached up. He pulled the x-ray. He turned it around to the right place. The people handling the operating room froze because they knew what had happened. He never said one word and then did the operation. And he said, there were times when I looked on the x-ray, I went in and I, was, I removed what was there as a tumor. And the Lord said, go beyond. And I went beyond and there was the real thing. And I pulled that out. People are living today because he went, he followed the Holy Ghost. He followed the flow. He followed the flow. That's why I'm trying to tell you, this anointing is not just here for a service, but there's many people that are professional in what they do, and they know what to do, but they they can't come to a place where they just relinquish and say, okay, Lord, you, Jesus, take the wheel. Lord, you take over now. 
you take my hands, you guide me, you lead me, and you show me. What if I told you? What if I do a little confession here right now? What if I told you that in everything that's happened in 42 years of ministry, not one time have I ever felt qualified? Not one time have I ever felt qualified. In actual fact, when the Lord said, do it, I said, Lord, are you kidding me? This is private now, me and the Lord. Are you kidding me? Do that. Seriously? When? Now? Yes. You hear me preach with boldness. But that's just how I preach. But inside, I have to lean on him and rely on him because without him, we're in big trouble. One day without him, you don't want. Can you say amen? That's why you can never get to the place where I can do this, I know what to do. No. We have to always be dependent upon him and reliant upon him. Can you say amen? Somebody said, Pastor, what are you believing for? I'm being pressed again for big, big things. I'm 31 days into it right now. I'm getting ready for this next week. Let me tell you, I've got to be careful not to unload one thing. And I haven't been. I've been very disciplined. Amen. So I'm keeping it all for next Sunday morning. Hallelujah. But we never, ever. Now you say, why do you say that? Because the moment the Lord begins to bless you, are you with me? And God begins to increase you, and the Lord begins to multiply you, there is a tendency to ease back and they kind of sit back and go, boy, I tell you, we're just doing great, aren't we? And then, you th- then people actually start to kind of, well, I, I did this, I did that. No, that's not what you did. You actually were submitted to the Lord. That's why that blessing came on you. Don't come up now with other stories. Hello. Don't come up, you know, you know because my wife and I, we actually, I did this and she did that and then the Lord. And everybody always wants to give the net. No. Tell it like it is. Tell it you were a blubbering idiot. You were crying out to God. Hey! And then the Lord came and the Lord rescued you. And you go, ah, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And then everybody thought, wow, look at them. They're just amazing, isn't it? But nobody knew. Nobody knew. No one knew. That's why you hear a lot of preachers. They never tell you the back end battles and the struggles. I always try to tell everybody the <laughs> My wife says, you tell everything. Yeah, I tell everything, yeah. So that everybody can know that it is not man, but it is God that is doing the work. It is important that we understand that because by the hand of God, we will be sustained. By the hand of God, we will be carried over the next three and five and ten years if Jesus tarries and he will carry us in on eagle's wings we'll soar and he'll carry us right in and we'll go in through the eastern gate. I'm telling you, Jesus is coming very soon. But our dependency is not on ourselves or on our flesh, but upon him and him alone. Hallelujah. In Christ alone, I put my trust and glory in the power of the cross. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The amen corner is getting riled up here now. Hallelujah. Took a little while here this morning. But the amen corner is being stirred. It's amazing how quiet the highway is. 
We were always fighting with buses and Ubers and taxis and only God knows what. It's gone. Say this out loud. It's not by my ability. It's not by my power. It's not by my might. But it's by his hand that I am sustained. And then as Jesus said, I must needs go to Samaria. Somebody said, what are you doing today? I don't know. I have to go over here. Had you not heard the Lord? You up and left and went to Atlanta, and God said, go to Tampa. Had you not heard from God to go to Tampa? No telling. A lady flipping through YouTube, finds the program, sees the stand. She's up in New Jersey, and she is drawn to what the crazy preacher is saying. So I, I must go to the healing school. That's why we have to do only what he tells us to do. As your pastor this morning, you must only do what he tells you to do. Don't go running here. Don't fly to a foreign country. Don't get on a plane and go to this state and that state. And only do what he tells you to do. Only do what he tells you to do. Very important. I feel the anointing on this project, Eden, Operation Eden, just like I do for a major crusade. Everything's coming to pass. We're looking to buy a market, a farmer's market, where we can take all the produce and then sell it through the farmer's market. We're working on that right now. Yeah. This is one thing. So get ready for what heaven has. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, what people didn't understand when Jesus walked the earth, he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. He returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. I'm going to go through Samaria. Jews did not go through Samaria. So the Spirit of God will tell you to do and go where the normal thing is not to do that. God's not in what's obvious. God's not in what's obvious. Obviously, this is what we should do right now. Some of the greatest things in ministry will come out of what's not obvious. One quick story. I'll tell you one quick story. Is that okay with you? Back in the 90s, 
because we were doing crusades, I felt, to get the mailing list of all the churches in America. Well, there was, at that time, probably close to 400,000, maybe 420,000 churches listed. So we bought the mailing list. We sent out a letter to all the churches. It didn't matter if you were Presbyterian, Baptist, Dutch Reformed, lived on a farm, Mennonite, Salvation Army. If you were a church, you got a letter from me. And I said, dear pastor, we are praying about coming to your city or region, and we're going to do a week-long crusade. If you'd like to be a part together with us, and please fill out this card and send it back. We did a full-paid postcard where they just put their name and the number to contact and just send it back to the, main, to the, to the ministry. This is, this is before the internet. Okay. So, sorry. All you internet people, this is before. This is old school. This is old school 90s way of operating before there was live stream or anything. So the cards began to come in from all of America. I mean, there's probably out of the four, 400 and something, probably maybe 10,000 cards came in. So what we went through them, that we tried to put a pile together. So many came in. This was St. Louis. That came in from Denver. This came in from Chicago. And what shocked me, Salvation Army, Methodist pastor, yes, we'd like to be involved. So I began to realize then this thing was not closed to one group of people because you think it would just be Pentecostal, but we had Church of God, Church of Oh My God, Assembly of God, Assembly of Oh My God. We had Word of Faith, we had Word of Doubt and Unbelief, we had everything in between. <laughs> so out of all of those cards that came back, the ones that ignored, just ignored, never responded, we get a letter from a church in a city called El Paso, Texas. And it was a major church at that time. I think it's still a major church. I think they seeker sensitive today, which they weren't at that time, but now they went seeker, which is fine, to each his own. And the letter said, do not come to our city. We don't want your ministry here. We don't want anything that you're doing here at all. We don't like what you're doing. And I have never, in all the years of ministry, had a letter written to me telling me, don't you dare come here. you not welcome in our city. I thought, first of all, El Paso, if you look on the list of cities, I think it's ranked number 333 in America of cities. It's like the armpit of America. That's, I'm sorry. If you come from El Paso, I'm just going to tell you. It's not on your list of places you want to go before you die. It was not even on a list of places when I prayed of all the cities of America that I looked at El Paso and said, El Paso, oh, El Paso, how I long to be with thee. So I looked at my team at that time and I said, you know what, I think this is the Lord. I think God's telling us to go to El Paso. I said, no, I've never had such a violent response from any place that I feel I need to go there. I must needs go to El Paso. So we went, we tried to get a venue. No church would work with us. I said, fine, get the convention center. We rented the convention center. No Christian radio station would work with us. I said, hire the secular radio station. No Christian newspaper would work with us. We went to the news, to the secular news. ABC were there interviewing me. They did a great job. The main newspaper was front page of the main newspaper. We went in the convention center. We must have had several thousand people. We we packed the place out on the Friday night. I thought, I'm going to drop a bomb on Friday night. <laughs> Friday night, I had my whole book table. We took two and a half hours and gave every piece of product away. Probably gave away, only got maybe $100,000 worth of books, tapes, videos, and everyone left carrying some of our product. I thought, I must sow seed into this place. I'm, 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 gonna, I'm dropping a bomb here. I must needs go through here. Well, what we didn't know was there was a young man at that time. Well, he's a lot older when I say young. I mean, he's younger than me now, but I was probably younger than him at the time. But in retrospect, from my age now, he was young. Anyway, he came to River Bible Institute, graduated from River University, 
Not only did he get it, he went to Mexico, started planting churches all over Mexico. He came across the border, came to El Paso. That guy planted churches everywhere. Not only did he plant churches, God used him in a profound way. Well, I believe what, when was it, Pastor Eric, two, three years ago, that he went home to be with the Lord? He was in his late 60s, and family members showed up, and he had had a will that he wanted in his death to be brought to the ministry here. And if you remember what it was, it was $600,000, two checks of $300,000 that he had kept aside. Even though he built all the churches in Mexico, he never touched this because he said, this has to go to RMI for souls. And it came out of Mexico. It came out of El Paso. He would come to all the ministers' conference. He never pushed to get a seat. He sit right at the back. He'd just be quiet. He was just like there. Never. You never heard nothing from him. He was just building. You know, over the years, I looked at it and said, Lord, I think maybe did we waste our time going to El Paso? Well, when that happened, I just stood shocked. I thought, oh, No the churches that were planted in Mexico. And now they're going to plant a River Bible Institute there in Mexico. Hallelujah. So between now and the time that he comes to take us home, you might see me go to some strange places. Don't ask why. I must needs go there. And that's my message. Hallelujah. 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 You want to know why? Because you're about your father's business. And it's none of anybody else's business. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And there's many other stories I could tell you, but then we would start the camp meeting, and I'm not going to do that right now. Will you bow your heads across the field today? While heads are bowed and eyes are closed, two things are going to happen. I'm going to give a call for people that need Jesus. Only the work is moving at present, please. And then we're going to have communion together. And then we'll wrap the service up and bring it to close. If you are here under this great pavilion today or you're watching by way of television, And you've never, ever given your life to Jesus. You've never said, Jesus, come be my Lord and Savior. I want to ask you a question right now. What would happen if today was your last day on the earth? You breathed out your last breath. Where would you spend eternity? This is very, very important. I want you to know there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. And what took place 2,000 years ago on Calvary's cross, no group of men would have organized that the Son of God would come and sacrifice himself on a cross on a hill called Calvary. The will of God wasn't in the obvious. I said the will of God wasn't in the obvious. And today, all you have to do is surrender your life and say, Lord Jesus, here I am. I repent of my sin and I give my life to you. Will you come? Will you take me? I come as I am. Forgive me. And he will come and do just that. If you were sitting here today and you gave your life to the Lord in days gone by, but you've grown cold, you're not serving God like you should, you've allowed the things of the world to come in, you've lost that passion, that first love that you had, but somehow that's gone. You heard our brother testify. It was the death of his brother that sent him over the edge. Maybe it's the hidden things of the heart, pride, unforgiveness, bitterness, jealousy, anger, lust, But today you want to be free. 
Maybe there's something outward that the enemy's tripped you in. Like he could have said, Lord, it's done. Look what I've done. I've messed everything up. Just let me die. But he cried out and asked God to forgive him. And the Lord delivered him out of a mental institution. What about you? Maybe you're not in an institution, but your mind is an institution. You're plagued with the thoughts in your own mind. It's time to be free today. Jesus is standing and he says, come, I love you. Maybe it's a storm, a sudden divorce, a bankruptcy, the loss of a loved one, a sudden illness, the betrayal of a close friend, the loss of a job. Something happened that rocked your world, took your breath away. But today you say, Lord, I'm coming. Will you surrender to him? Will you say, yes, Lord? And then finally, you love God, but you're not sure of your salvation. The devil's always lying to you, telling you that you're not saved, but you want to make sure today you want to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're a child of God. If this is you, right where you are, my head's about and eyes are closed, quickly put your hand up right now and say, pray for me. I need Jesus. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Right at the back, over here, two hands right here. Another hand over there, another hand back there. Come on, slip it up high. Let me see that hand and say, yes, Lord. Yes, yes, right at the back, against the screen. Come on, there's others here. The Lord's speaking to you right now. Come on. Don't let the workers find you because our workers are like bloodhounds. They will find you. They're going to find you today. You came to the right place to get arrested for the kingdom of heaven. Anybody else, just slip that hand up and say, yes, that's me, Pastor. Pray for me. Once you've raised, you can put it down. I want you to look at me right now all across the field. On this side over here, you didn't raise your hand, but want to be included. Put your hand up right now and say, include me. Include me. Put it up high and say, yes, that's me. That's me. I see your hand back there. This section, the middle section, you didn't raise your hand, but want to be included. Slip that hand up right now. I've already seen your hands. Anybody else? Slip that hand up right now. Thank you. Anybody else? On the far side, you didn't raise your hand, but want to be included. Put your hand up right now. Now, in Jesus' name. I want every person that raised your hand to stand to your feet right now. Quickly. Go ahead and stand to your feet. Bring your personal belongings and come right down to the front. We're going to pray together. Come. 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 Just come now. No turning back. No turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me. The world behind me, come on. The cross before me. The world behind me. The cross before me. The world behind me. No turning back. You can take the whole world, but give me Jesus. Take the, world, take the whole world, but give me Jesus. You can take the whole world, no turning back.
I want you in the congregation to stretch your hand out towards them. And you that are watching by way of television, just raise your hand and pray this prayer together with me right now. Believe it in your heart and say it with your mouth. Say, Father, I come to you in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Lord, you said in your word, if I confess with my mouth, Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. And I believe in my heart that God has raised you from the dead. I will be saved. So, Father, right now, I confess Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart right now. Take out the stony heart. Put in a heart of flesh. Wash me. Cleanse me. Change me. Fill me. Use me. Let me never be the same again. I turn my back on the world. I turn my back on sin. And I follow you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for shedding your blood for me. Thank you that on the third day you rose for me. And thank you that you're coming back again for me. From this day on, I'll never be the same again. I confess Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. He is my Lord and my Savior. And right now, by faith in the finished work of the cross and by the shed blood of Jesus, I am saved. Thank you, Lord, for saving them now. Now lift your hands right now. Father, I pray that you would seal them now by your blood and by your spirit, that on that day not one would be missing. Raise them up to be mighty men and women of God and use them to impact this generation, we pray. I break every curse off of their life. I send it back to its place of origin. Any spirit of witchcraft, broken! And I set you free. Fear, bondage, addictions, to anything. Man-made, synthetic. Heal them, Lord from even the spirit of pharmacare. And I thank you for it even now. And on that day that we give these words, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter thou into the joy of the Lord. And we thank you for it now, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for watching today on YouTube. Please press the subscribe button and also the notification button and like and get the word out so others can watch.